Holy God our Father, we pray that on this precious day of the Lord, that we may receive your word at this time. This is what we earnestly pray for. We pray that the preacher of your word will be filled with the Holy Spirit, and we pray that also those who hear your word may all be inspired. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our hope is the resurrection. Let us read the sermon outline together. God is eternal life. God was with Abraham, and when he died, he was with his son Isaac. And when he died, he was with his son Jacob. In the same way, the relationship formed with God continues to a thousand generations. Those who misunderstood this spoken covenant believed that God had nothing to do with the dead, but dealt only with the living and blessed them. These secularists were Sadducees. However, the gospel of grace we accepted is believing God's promise that he blesses in this life and gives resurrection and eternal life in the next life. Our faith is to be prosperous in all things and have health in body, just as our spirit prospers. Therefore, the prosperous spirit is having hope in the next life. Likewise, we ought to believe in the resurrection, but there are also modern-day Sadducees. They consider prosperity in this life to be a blessing and have no faith that their spirits will resurrect in the next life. Subsequently, they neglect their spiritual life of faith. Our faith is living by the law for this present life and living by the Holy Spirit for the next life. We do not rely on the flesh or our children because we will live forever at the resurrection. Since the body will, die, will not die at that time, we will not need children. Therefore, we will not need wives and we will be like the angels. Since our hope is the resurrection, we seek daily bread on earth and his kingdom and his righteousness for the life to come. Be holy. Our lives should be holy and godly. Then the flesh and this present life will prosper. Be full of the Holy Spirit and be spiritual for the first resurrection. Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Resurrection. So that the Lord can guide us into the Resurrection, He came on this earth. Therefore, the faith that we maintain even until this time we must realize that it was for the resurrection since the very beginning. So when we leave this earth, our body will be renewed into a new body and we will live this way. There are, there are so many evil people in this world. And in the environment of this world, it is very difficult to survive because there were so many evil people. And in this kind of environment, we realize, we realize the state of ourselves. It is not only people that we see around us, but it is ourselves who are very evil. We are no different. We realize that we are all sinners. So we come we come to grasp that this life on this world in this world is not the place where we will live forever but we seek we seek the world to come this is a principle that we should take for that we should take for certainty and the meaning that God wants to give us is that is that we should judge everything according to this understanding. So we hear the word of God in church and, and we also preach the word of God in church. So whether it be those who hear or those who preach God's word, 
We should have the right attitude and heart concerning talking about the resurrection. Yet many people Many people do not have their hearts centered on the resurrection and its purpose. And even those who teach the resurrection do not have the purpose of the resurrection in their hearts. And they do not focus on it, but rather, rather their hearts and interests are for other things in this world. This, this happens often. So, even those who preach about the resurrection have their interests and focus elsewhere. This is the case for those who teach about the resurrection and those, those who believe in it. So, people very often do not have the resurrection and its purpose in their hearts. They merely have this vague idea that these things will these things will happen somehow, as if like like chance. But some people do not even think like this. They have a very vague, very vague and obscure idea about the resurrection. But we should not deal with it like this. The issue of the resurrection must be taken seriously, and. Its clear purpose must always be taken to heart. So if we do not have a burning passion for the resurrection, it is not acceptable. So we must have this clear focus towards the resurrection. So you and I today can liken our situation to Noah and his ark along with his family. They all went into the ark and survived. So this is the same situation for us. So even though it does not rain any longer since the time of Noah, yet we are all in a similar situation. Once we ride atop of this ark, we must main, we must keep inside. We must realize that we can never come out of this ark the moment we have stepped into this ark. So, a more easier example for us to understand is that the moment we ride atop of a train, the moment we climb on top of a train, we must maintain the decision to stay on the train until we reach the destination, because we will never reach the destination if we come out of the train. This is what faith is about. We cannot go back. So, the moment we climb atop of the train, we must, we must stay on it until the very end. So many people in this world, many people in this world have this idea that the spirit, that the spirit does not exist. However, the, the spirit will last forever. They do understand the presence of the mind and of of your thinking mind however they don't believe in anything else so many people have at least this idea that the mind exists but they do not believe that the resurrection exists they follow and believe other kinds of ideas found in this world so although although there are other kinds of groups who teach some kind of after-death experience, yet there are no people like us who believe in the resurrection. And since we understand this idea of the resurrection, there are no other groups apart from Christians who believe and teach this. But even though we may be believers, even though we may be believers in Jesus, we must, we do not actually realize that many of us have doubts about the resurrection. So it is, it is a commonplace thing to find much doubts about the resurrection. They are not confident in this. And this is why they do not 
they do not make necessary preparations and necessary devotion for the sake of the resurrection. Because and since they do not make necessary devotion and preparations for the resurrection to come, the the regrets will be all the greater when we finally meet that day. So if we conclude to ourselves that there is no resurrection, then we won't make any any necessary preparations for it. But if we do believe this with certainty, with certainty we will prepare for it. Likewise, people in this world have the dominant idea that the resurrection does not exist. They merely go with the flow and follow their own destinies in this life. And then, and then they leave issues like the resurrection aside and they do not deal with this seriously. And they just let the days go by without dealing seriously with the resurrection. So I believe that this is, this is, a, this is a, a thing that happens for many people in this world. So, so, so people in this world will think about, will think about otherworldly things, but they will not necessarily deal with the resurrection seriously. Because they are so overwhelmed by the issues and troubles of this world, they leave these issues aside and do not deal with them. So people in this world often have this idea that that they will things will somehow get better in some kind of vague way there will be a better life after this after this and they have this this vague this vague dreamlike vision of the future and when they look to the when they look to those who are around them they also have similar ideas that that they will be some kind of vague vague ecstasy or paradise in this off in this in the days to come after we die but they have this vague idea but they don't even not actually believe this so whoever it is many people often have this vague idea and they do not progress after this but this is not the level that Christians should make that Christians should maintain they should go beyond this so the hope that Christians have is the resurrection that Christ gives us so Christians do not hold to the promise that Christ himself has given us they also have their own vague created ideas but what you and I ought to believe is the promise of Jesus Christ. This promise is the promise of the resurrection and that he will later come back and take us to be with him. So this is the promise given to us by Jesus Christ. But many Christians and people in the world do not believe this. They just live their lives on this earth and then they go. But the majority of such people in fact, almost all of them live in this world and then die without believing believing this. There will probably be, probably be millions and billions of people who have not truly believed in this and then they pass away. They, they leave this earth without having certain faith. And this is because they only hold to the things that are before them and they do not rely on the faith in the resurrection. What faith has given what God has given us is faith in the resurrection, not in faith in what we see right now. So this is all begun with faith. This is all begun with the faith of the resurrection which Jesus has given us from the very beginning. This is the first stepping stones that we have trodden on. It all starts here. And the Lord has also spoken about the resurrection. Even the Old Testament speaks about the resurrection. The premise of the resurrection is found is found throughout since the very beginning. The concept is right here in the Old Testament. And what it what it actually says 
is that there will certainly be a resurrection. So all that goes on, even in the Old Testament, has this premise. We cannot maintain the consistency and the consistency of the Old Testament without the resurrection being true. The whole Old Testament assumes that the resurrection is true and that it will happen. So this is what the Old Testament tells us. However, what the Lord is telling us is that He came directly as the Word to tell us about the promise of the resurrection. The New Testament contains this promise that He will come back to take us to be with Him. So even though we, don't, we do not make any moves in this world, we know that the resurrection always stands before us. And when the Lord came to us and spoken, us, spoken to us about these things, he, is tell, he told us that it is coming. And it will come by a step-by-step -step process. So even though we do not make any, we do not have any concerns and make preparations for the resurrection, it will come soon. And the one who gave us this promise passed away. And once he had spoken to us about these promises, he died and then he left us. So the one who had spoken to us about these promises spoke about these promises and it was already mentioned before he came in the Old Testament. So the things, so what this is telling us is that we, that we have, we have no need to doubt about the promise of the resurrection. The Lord came to us, he spoke to us about the resurrection and then he died. What what was thus proved to us was that the resurrection is for sure and it was confirmed. So the things that the Lord told us about the resurrection was confirmed to us by the apostles who came after him. They also confirmed the promise of the resurrection and again and again. So if we look at the New Testament, it is telling us about the resurrection again and again. And the Old Testament is telling us the necessity and the premise that the resurrection is true. It assumes that the resurrection is true. And then the Lord came on this earth to tell us directly about the resurrection. So the Lord, the Lord implied throughout his whole life about the reality of the resurrection. And he finally say, he finally said to us, and I will come back again to you so that you may be with me and that you will know that all these things are true. So, while these things were prophesied for thousands of years in the Old Testament, it was all summed up and concluded in the Lord's short life when He came to us. So, in a very ordered and careful and carefully calculated plan of God, the plan of the resurrection has now been fulfilled and taught to us. And now, this resurrection has come to us in our living reality. So this is, this is for sure. So if we go back to the Old Testament, if we look at the if we look back at the Old Testament, some people some people will look at the re look at the Old Testament and they will be shocked to actually realize that it is actually telling us about the resurrection. So how will the resurrection take place? When will it happen? How do we begin in this resurrection process? What do we have to do? So even though there are these questions, the Bible is telling us for sure that there will be a resurrection and it will it will surely come to us. But many people who only read the Old Testament didn't know how this would all take place. So, so if we only if we only had the Old Testament, we would not have much detailed understanding and much hope about the resurrection, even though it did talk about it. Nevertheless, 
Nevertheless, the Old Testament tells us about many godly people, many godly people who were heading for and who had gladly received all types of opposition and persecution and difficulties for the sake of this resurrection. So many, many godly people had hoped and strived for the resurrection. They had suffered difficulties and persecution and opposition because of the resurrection. They knew that it would happen and this is why they endured all kinds of things and oppositions for its sake. So you and I today must realize that the Lord will guide us into this resurrection. He will come soon. He had already spoken to us about this resurrection and now we are following this carefully ordered plan to head to this destination. And the Lord also promised us that He will He will promise to take us into a much better place than what we are living in right now. So, all of the teachings, all of the teachings and heritage of the early church has continued to us until now through this teaching. So whether it be whether it be some newcomers who have come very recently to the church or or some or some believers who have spent a long time in this church, whoever it is, we are all heading for the resurrection. So this is this is the path that we must head to that is for the resurrection. So, if we do not take this seriously, we may be at risk of not being worthy of it. Those who take responsibility for the resurrection, that is, the resurrection of life, will finally be worthy of it. So, many people, many people had come before us and they made great sacrifices again and again until the Lord finally came to us. And now the Lord comes to us directly. He is knocking on the door and He is asking us to respond to this resurrection. This is not mere information, but this is a promise. And you and I must respond to this promise. If we have received this if we have received this good news, if we have received this promise, we know that this message goes beyond all space and time and we should we should respond to it faithfully and sincerely. So the question of how we respond we respond to it will alter how it will all result. So if we have received the news of the resurrection, we should respond accordingly and put it into practice. So the very the very person who told us about the resurrection, he himself died and he resurrected. So if we know that the one who spoke to, to us about this is true, then we should act accordingly. We ourselves must live for this. We should make firm decisions about this and we should act in a responsible way. So when we do this, when we respond to the message of the resurrection and we act accordingly, when we make all kinds of decisions and devotion for this, then we will receive, we will receive the appropriate fruits of our actions. This is not mere information but we have received the promise of this resurrection. So Jesus Christ had personally, personal, personally achieved the resurrection and he had also spoken this to us. So you and I should all act accordingly. Since we realize that this promise has value, since there is great value in this promise, when we realize this, from now on, the Lord will help us. On the other hand, on the other hand, those who have the promise of the resurrection spoken to them very plainly, and even though this teaching has been plainly given to us and plainly taught to us, if we neglect it and we constantly dwell in our doubts, 
then we cannot but suffer because of our doubts and we won't be able to make any firm decisions or actions and then it will result in us not being very much worthy of the resurrection. So those who have doubts about the resurrection will not make very, ma very much efforts or dedication for it. So this is not what God wants of us. So, so if we ha if we are very sure in heart about the resurrection, then we will then we will make actions to be worthy of it, and we won't regret this at all. But we will make all kinds of necessary devotion and preparations for the sake of the resurrection, because. Because all of us know, all of us should know for certain that the resurrection is standing right before us. So we should all be responsible and we should respond in the necessary way for this resurrection. But those who do not have sufficient faith about the resurrection and they do and they doubt about this, they will neglect. They will neglect to act responsibly or act in the proper way. And they won't. They they will end up not being worthy of the resurrection. So, so people who have doubts will have great difficulty having responsibility for the resurrection. So even though we ourselves are not worthy, we must understand that the resurrection will come. The resurrection is coming. It is a fact. It will come to every one of us who lives on this earth. But some people will unexpectedly face a resurrection that they did not want. This is the resurrection of judgment. In this way, you and I must prepare. We should make all preparations for this resurrection. We should let go of our own individual ideas. Just as, just as all of us act in a faithful way when we go to the office or we work for a company we act in a very faithful and loyal way so that we will we will be promoted and that we will be well treated in that company so in a similar way in a, in a similar way we might think that if we if we just act in a very faithful way for the resurrection we will receive the necessary fruits but it is not precisely it is not precisely like this so the idea that if we simply work very hard and we work in a very loyal way somehow things will things will things will turn out very well in a kind of vague way but this is not quite true so things things will not just be given to us in a good way if we don't even if we don't make any efforts this is a very this is a very uh, inaccurate idea what we must understand is that we must not take the resurrection for granted we should make sacrifices we should make the effort and we should be faithful for the resurrection so there was no one there was no one who will just receive it for free as if receiving a free plate of food without earning it at all you and us must understand that we should avoid being selfish but rather we should make sacrifices selfishness is a hindrance to the resurrection if we look back we can realize that selfishness is the very origin of very origin of the death of this whole world it was because of selfishness that the whole world is heading for death so the core issue of all the troubles and death and calamities of this world is due to selfishness selfishness does not get us anywhere and this also and this also 
is the case for the resurrection. If we act in a selfish way in our lives of faith, we will go into much danger. This is selfishness is an issue that we must stay on guard against. The Lord had clearly warned us about this. We must go in the opposite direction of selfishness. So those who go in direct opposition to selfishness are going in the path that the Lord wants. They are going in the way of life. They are going in the good way that the Lord wants. So if and yet if we follow selfishness, we are going in the opposite resu opposite direction of the resurrection. Just just as the Lord had made sacrifices, he did not think of himself, but he gave himself completely over to save us. So you and I must also make sacrifices for the church, and we should work very hard for the church. So, it is not that everyone, not just everyone will go into the resurrection, but it is the very, it is the very person who sacrifices himself and he sac and he works for the church. This is the person who will enter the resurrection. So we must not take it for granted that just because we believe, we will unconditionally enter the resurrection. This is a very misleading idea. So some people, some people are hold to this idea that if you just believe, if you just believe, you will unconditionally enter the resurrection. But this is a very shortened message so that mass amounts of people can convert and they accept the gospel of Jesus Christ. But we must be careful of misunderstandings. We must understand that if we have this idea, if we just believe, then we will unconditionally go into eternal life. Just so long as we just believe, unrelated to however way be we behave, then we will enter the resurrection. This is a misleading idea and it results in all kinds of evil. Because even though they know they have, even though, even though they, even though they themselves know that they ought to behave in a certain way, they still hold to the idea of faith alone and that they will enter heaven unconditionally. But the same people, they act in all kinds of irresponsible ways, they cause harm for the church, they cause great trouble for the church, and they cause great damage. And it, be, and it all originates in this misleading idea that if we just believe, we will unconditionally go to heaven. We, we, will, we will enter great trouble and we can be destroyed because of this misleading idea. So, the, the origin which prevents many people from entering the resurrection, the decisive problem is because of this misunderstanding. When we realize that the Lord himself made so much sacrifices to, to save us from sins, he blocked, he stopped the problem of sin over our lives, but if we mislead this, if we have this misling, misleading idea and we take the Lord's mercy for granted, then, then we will fall into all this kind of danger. So what we must do is we must please the Lord. So the so we should all pour out our love for the church and we should help the church, we should help the work of God. What the Lord himself had done is that, is that he had helped the work of God. He had assisted the work of God 100%. So Jesus was the one worthy of the resurrection. So in the same way, we should behave like Jesus. We should be worthy and act worthy of the resurrection.
So, instead of considering ourselves as already worthy of the resurrection, let us go back to the beginning and and act as if we are beginners and be very earnest to work faithfully and responsibly for the resurrection. So we should not have this misleading idea that if we just believe, we will automatically, unconditionally enter eternal life without, without considering the way we behave. So the, the resurrection will not come to us automatically and somehow without any effort. We must we must respond to it. So whether it is the one who preaches the word of God or the one who listens to the word of God, they must unite in thought. They must unite in the plan of God. They must enter and participate in the plan of God all together. So even assistant pastors should all join together under the overseer's leadership and we should all walk together in one direction. So even though the journey is difficult, we must persevere together, assistant pastors included. So I commend to you in the name of Jesus Christ that we will all work together and would act worthy of the resurrection. Now let us all look at today's passage. We will continue, we will continue from where we left off. So the Lord had entered Jerusalem, he had gone through, he had gone through the temple courtyards, and he continued on his path and ministry in the city of Jerusalem. So, previously we had studied that the Pharisees and the Herodians had caused great trouble to catch Jesus in what he, had, he would say, but this time there was another group who tried to oppose Jesus. Now, there is a new group this time who tried to oppose Jesus. These were the Sadducees. So, the Sadducees witnessed, what, witnessed how the Pharisees and the Herodians tried to trap Jesus, but they failed. So, when they saw this, they said, Okay, Pharisees, let us handle this. We will try now to oppose Jesus. So, just as the Pharisees did, the Sadducees gathered together and they asked Jesus a question. And so, the Sadducees were slightly different. So, in the eyes of the Pharisees, in the eyes of the Sadducees, the Lord, the, they looked upon the Lord in a very despicable way. So, what was different about the Sadducees is that they were much fewer in number, and although they were fewer in number, they had the majority of, of the authoritative and powerful positions in, in the Jewish government. They possessed all of the powerful positions and the authoritative positions. And the reason, and the reason was, it's because they had, they had made deals with the Roman government, they had joined together, they had allied themselves with the, with the Roman Empire, and they had sold themselves in this way because they did not believe in the life after death. So when the Lord Jesus had entered the temple courts and he had overturned all the tables and the, and the chairs of the money changers, uh, as the Lord was doing this, the Sadducees realized just how much the Sadducees realized just how much danger they they may fall into. So the, the Sadducees decided to stop Jesus. So the Sadducees themselves feared that they would lose their positions of authority as Jesus was doing all these things. Because we remember that Jesus was driving out all the sellers and the purchasers and the buyers 
because they realize because because we must realize that all the revenue all the revenue and the gains of the money changers and the sellers found in the outer court of the temple this was all a source of income for the sadducees and they realized that they realized that this would be this would result in great danger for the sadducees so they tried to take action and they had a clear purpose so they had a com they had a clear purpose for all the ways that they they behaved of a distinctive idea that the Sadducees believed is that there was no resurrection there was no tomorrow there was only this life on this earth there was no resurrection there is no angels there is no there is no afterlife there is only this life on this earth and that is the end there is nothing future so so the idea the idea that you must behave well so that you will be re, you will be rewarded in the life to come but if you do not behave well you will not you will not be rewarded uh, they didn't believe in any of this they just believed that you could behave however way you liked because there is no life after this world and they do not believe they do not believe in the whole of the Old Testament they only believed in the first five books which was the law of Moses this is Genesis Exodus Leviticus numbers and Deuteronomy the only writings of Moses they treated the rest of the Old Testament like Joshua or the kings they treated they treated this as merely writing of reference but they only hold hold to and believed in the writings of Moses they didn't believe in the life to come and they believed that Moses did not talk about the resurrection at all however the Pharisees believed in the resurrection and they taught this so the Sadducees and the and the Pharisees were against each other and this and this kind of situation continues even today and so and yet what the Pharisees believed is that although they believed that there was a resurrection they believed that the current state of this world will continue exactly as it is on this earth but we just merely we just merely have crossed over past death so the Sadducees, the Pharisees believe that the resurrection will will maintain the status quo uh, but but in the eyes of the Sadducees all these ideas were ridiculous and they scoffed at these ideas and so because the Sadducees had opposed the teaching of the resurrection and they opposed the Pharisees they decided to stop and completely remove Jesus from doing his ministry and so they all the Sadducees all gathered together and they asked him a question teacher we have a question for you let us say that Moses let us say that Moses we we know that Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies and leaves a wife but no children the man must marry the widow and have children for his brother now let us say let us say that let us say there are there are two brothers and one of them marries a wife and yet and yet this brother one of the brothers dies and now the other brother must marry the widow but when he dies he must marry he also must marry this woman and and this brother dies and now another brother must marry the same widow and they all die in fact all seven brothers have died although they all married this widow and they had no children now whose 
wife. Now, whose wife, whose husband will this woman be? Okay, let us... Again, now there were seven brothers. The first one married and died without leaving any children. The second one married the widow, but he also died leaving no children. In the same way, it is the same with the third. In fact, none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman died too. At the resurrection, whose wife will she be, since the seven were married to her? Because this woman had married had married all of these brothers without leaving any children. But they will all resurrect. So at the resurrection, whose at the resurrection, whose wife will she be? So what is the criteria? What is the criteria for whose wife will this this woman be? Will, it, will she remain married to the husband she had most loved or to the husband that, had, that was most righteous or to the husband that she had married first? What was the criteria? They thought that this was a very, this was a very difficult question, but this was merely to conclude that the resurrection does not exist at all. This was a key weapon for the f that the f that the Sadducees used to nullify the existence of the resurrection. So the so we must we must remember that the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection at all, but they merely asked this they merely asked this to prove that the resurrection did not exist. So they did not believe in the resurrection at all. So what they were trying to say was that even Moses never mentioned about the resurrection. So the re the Pharisees, the typical, the typical answer of the Pharisees is that the first husband who had married the woman, even though all of those brothers did not have any children, they were the one, this first husband was the one who would be married to her at the resurrection. But what Jesus replied was this, are you not in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? You neither know the you neither know about the Bible or about the power of God, and this is why you have asked this question. What this me what he means when he says that he does not they do not know about the scriptures is this. Because it says in many places throughout the Old Testament about the resurrection. So, there are all sorts of places, whether it be in Job or Isaiah, and even the books of Moses, that tells us that the resurrection does exist. And now, Jesus also said, you do not know about the power of God. So, this, what this means is that they do not know about God who had the power to create all things. God was the one who created everything since the very beginning. He can do everything as He pleases. And so, they do not believe that God has power to do all these things. So, in short, the Pharisees were trying, in, in short, the Lord was saying that there will be no marriage at the resurrection. So, it says in Mark chapter 12, verse 25, when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. So, so this, 
this resurrection, this resurrection is different from what either the Sadducees or the Pharisees believed. This is not like as this is not as the Pharisees believed because they believe that the resurrection will continue the the exact state as they have been living on this earth. But it's not as the Pharisees believed, it is not as the Sadducees believed. They will be like the angels in heaven in that they will not marry or be given into married. We're not saying that they will float around, float around in the sky, but it means that they will enter into the glory of God in a perfect way and they will be perfectly united with God and they will enjoy everlasting peace and happiness. So all the joy, all the joy and happiness that we have on this earth will be surpassed many times fold in the life to come. So although the Sadducees had so strenuously believed in the law of Moses, what the Lord was telling them was this. Now about the dead rising, have you not read in the book of Moses, in the account of the bush, how God said to him, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. So this is a present tense. God had said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. So Abraham and Isaac and Jacob were people who lived many centuries beforehand. And yet God is saying in the present tense, I am the God of Jacob. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. This is not the past tense that he used to be the God of Abraham and used to be the God of Isaac and Jacob. It is used in the present tense. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He used the present tense. I am. What this indicates is that Abraham and Isaac and Jacob are living. So although, although they no longer dwell in the flesh, they are living. So God has, God has all power, the power to create everything out of nothing. And so he maintains everything by his unlimited power. What God is saying is that he is not the God of the dead, but he is the God of the living. So, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob did not pass away and then they evaporated into obscurity. But he is the God of the living, the God of the present, the God of the reality. He lives today. And just as Abraham, Isaac and Jacob hoped in the resurrection, so, the power of God's resurrection is working today in the same way. So, the saints of the past believed and acted in the same way. They did not meet the resurrection and they did not receive the promises in their lifetime. But they, they had this always in their mind. They constantly looked forward to it. So, what... So what the book of Luke is telling us, what the book of Luke is telling us, in Luke chapter 20, verse 35 to 36, it says, But those who are considered worthy of taking part in that age and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given married. It mentions who are considered worthy of taking part in the resurrection. So, the Bible tells us all over that that many believers did not see the resurrection being fulfilled and yet they all acted in a worthy way and they lived in a worthy way even though they did not they were not guided by the Lord Jesus himself yet they all gave themselves and they all sacrificed themselves for the resurrection so those who were led by God, he is the God of the resurrection, are the children of God and they will, as a result, be worthy of the final resurrection.
The, the Lord has, has made so many sacrifices to guide us, to deliver us, and to protect us until the end. This is about the truth. This is why all believers make so much sacrifice and face all kinds of challenges so that we can enter into eternal life. We should not have the misle misleading idea is that even if we stand still and we just believe without behaving any way, we will automatically somehow enter eternal life. This is a misleading idea. We must respond. The Lord had thought in depth about this to prepare us for this plan. He guides he guides all of us by his great power. And just as God had rose, had risen Jesus from the dead, he will also give us this new life. And it says, it says to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. And Paul also tells us that he will transform our lowly bodies so that he will be so that they will be like his glorious body. This is the promise of the Lord. Let us all be led by the Lord and enter eternal life. So I commend you in the name of Jesus. Now let us all pray together. Let us pray for the sake of our spirits that God will inspire us, that God will work upon us. Let us pray that we will be worthy of the resurrection as the children of God. Let us pray that we will all attain to the resurrection in a worthy way. Holy God our Father, we thank you. We thank you for the word that you have spoken to the whole church. We pray that you would take a hold of us and would inspire us. We pray that we may all live in a worthy manner for your resurrection. We pray that you would guide us. And we pray that all of the saints will enter into the world to come without leaving any of us. We pray that we may all successfully enter the resurrection. We pray that as we love each other, we work together and none of us will act selfishly. We pray that we can make all devotion and dedication for it together. We pray that none of us will shake in our hearts. We pray that none of us will stumble. But rather, by the Holy Spirit, we pray that we may realize the urgency and the necessary the necessity of the resurrection and its preparation, we pray in thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now let us all stand and sing praise to God. God is the one who works upon our hearts. God is the one who guides us in our lives and gives it meaning. God is the one who guides us to walk on this path. Let us sing to him. So from the depth of our heart, let us all welcome and honor Jesus for the resurrection together.
주님 생각 잘때 낫게 때 함께 하소서 지혜의 주여 말씀으로서 할렐루야 이제는 May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ The love of God our Father And the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon all of the saints of Sangwak Church and their families and all Berians. Amen.